Hi guys, today I finally got the Intico Pikmin. So in this video I'm going to make my version of the Intico Pikmin. Um, I'm going to show you the entire process. I've already printed the pan so I've done some preparation. It's a beautiful Pikmin to work with. Um, keep watching because in the end I have a comparison between my version of the Intico and the first commercially available version of the Intico as a watercolor paint. Um, they'll be for sale very soon, so keep an eye on my shop, and I hope you like the video. So, let's start to look at the pigment first. This is a beautiful purple-like pink pigment, and I have to be honest, it really resembles Yin Min in how it feels, um, the weight of it how compact it scoops so it's very comparable as a pigment powder but we'll only know if we made paint out of it so I'm adding my binder here I'm using the same proportions as I do with Yin Min since I think they kind of feel safe and as you can see it mixes beautifully with the binder this stage I would say it needs no mulling it's not true obviously it needs mulling and there's still lumps of it but it already feels so smooth spreading it out with the pellet knife so let's see what the mulling does a muller is not only used to get the lumps out but um, it does a lot of invisible stuff as well it's about dispersing the pigment particles into the binder, so making sure it stays mixed with the binder. And um, it doesn't really matter how fine your pigment is or how well it mixes with uh, your binder, just by using the pellet knife. Um, most pigments just need to be milled. There are some exceptions. Um, you might have noticed that I don't mill my mica since I don't want to damage the mica particles. The smaller the particles, the less shimmer they get. And uh, I use quite a lot of pressure when I mill. So um, just mixing that with the pellet knife works, as well as my lapis lazuli. But I've milled that before I dried my homemade pigment. So. I still milled it, but not during the paint making phase. Cleaning up the plate here. And I want to leave as little pigment as possible since this is quite a precious pigment. Um, not only to me in my collection, but it's quite expensive as well. Still, hopefully that'll change in the future. Let's see when the Hackman test does its job and yeah it's actually uh, I sped up the milling process quite a bit but this is a gorgeous pigment to mix and make so I'm adding small layers to the pan first uh, I'm actually doing the exact same thing as I do with Yin Min since it is quite a similar pigment uh, the way it feels the way it works uh, Let's see how it, how it swatches. It looks somewhat more opaque than the commercial version I've tried. Interesting. And while it's drying, you can see the granulation defining more on the paper. I do really love this pigment and the color. As you saw in my previous video, it's mixable, but as a pigment itself, it's quite unique since I couldn't really get the exact same qualities during the mix. As you might have noticed on my paper here, on my swatch labels and, and my pen, I used uh, the pigment number PR298. Um, I, I took the liberty to just 
make this pigment that one but it's not uh, definite yet so it's um, it might change in the future I will sell these in these pens with these labels but um, if it changes uh, officially as a pigment index number I will change my labels and pens too trust me but I took the liberty to just make it that pigment for now I will add that to my listing as well it's not official cleaning up the plate here quickly since I want to do a test let's see how this does with my spectrometer so I want to see what beautiful curve this magenta violet like granulating pink gives me so as you saw loads of blue wavelengths loads of red and near infrared ones as well so what I'm doing now, I'm comparing my paint, which I just made, with the first commercially available one. Um, I'm making uh, two swatches of them, a mass tone and a wash. Um, letting them dry, obviously, before I can test them with my spectrometer to see what they look like uh, as a reflectance curve so on paper they're quite similar as you can see mine is a bit more granulating or more opaque almost but let's have a look so first I'm going to compare my regular swatch with the wash and as you can see here the spikes are Quite identical so uh, in the blue area the green cyan area a dip near the yellows and uh, there's less difference in the red and near infrared wave wavelengths so uh, green is my uh, mass tone here and red is the wash now let's keep an eye on the red because I'm going to make that the one from Schmincke and see how that compares to mine so as you can see here, um, wavelengths kind of the same. Uh, they all have the same dips and bumps in it. Uh, mine is a little bit more chromatic within the cooler range of the wavelengths. Um, theirs is a little bit more chromatic in the red or warmer wavelengths area. So as you can see in my swatches here, um, mine does granulate a bit like more aggressively uh, there's is there's it's just a bit softer in the granulation um, probably because of the binder uh, because it should be the same pigment when we look at the washes you can see the same difference uh, so mine granulates a bit more and therefore it it's getting a bit softer there's more white here it's I don't want to say staining it's granulating still but it's more evenly well dried out on the paper so let's have a look how the washes compare so I'm going to make the green line my wash and the red line is going to be their wash it's exactly the same uh, although the differences in the red and near infrared wavelengths it kind of disappeared over here so mine is still a bit more chromatic mine is a little bit cooler I think um, to the 4 to 4 I think 525 uh, nanometer wavelengths so the, all the cooler areas um, after the greens uh, it just towards the reds it gets kind of identical here so this is a comparison between uh, the first commercially available Yintico and the first handmade available Yintico on the market hope you liked the videos um, please subscribe to my channel, give it a like, and comment down below what you thought of it, and hope to see you next time.